Turn to somebody and say, you have that lean, hungry look in your eye. Tell them that. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Aren't you enjoying this time, though? Aren't you enjoying? I pray, I pray you're taking time, special time in this book. And it'll speak to you if you'll read it. And I want to go to the book of Acts, chapter 10. And I'm not going to preach long. They've got 30 minutes on there, but I'm going to go 25 in Jesus' name. Why mock ye? Why? Why are you laughing? I said I'm going to do it, and I can do it. Acts chapter 10. This chapter, this whole chapter ought to be what you focus on this week. Because there's two men in it. I'm going to sum the whole chapter up. There's two men in it. Cornelius. Not the one that was on Soul Train, Cornelius. That's who I think about when I hear Cornelius. I had not thought about that. It just came to me. But when I said it, I saw Soul Train. And some of you young people don't know what I'm talking about. And that's good. That's all right. But that was a good show. I'm sorry. I used to backslide every Sunday and watch or Saturday and watch it. All that I could. My parents wouldn't let me, but I'd sneak away sometimes. What was I talking about? Cornelius and Simon Peter. And both of them were fasting and praying in this chapter. Both of them were hungry in this chapter. And I'm going to preach all the way through this chapter, so I don't have time to read a lot of verses. I think I'll just cut right to it. And I'll go to verse 9 and verse 10. Then the next day, as they went on their journey, they drew to the city. Peter went up to the housetop to pray about the sixth hour, and then he became, everybody notice these words, very hungry and wanted to eat. But while they were preparing the food, he's hungry, he, 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 he's fasting, and while they were making the food, he fell into a trance. And I don't, I'll go quickly over. Look at uh, verse 30. He's talking to Simon Peter and he says, I was fasting until this hour. And at the ninth hour, I prayed in my house. Cornelius is speaking here. And because a man stood before me in bright clothing and said, Cornelius, your prayer has been heard and your alms are remembered in the sight of God. One more verse, verse 44. While Peter was still speaking these words, he was preaching, the Holy Spirit fell upon all those who heard the word. Not one of them did not experience the power of the Holy Ghost. And they were astonished, those of the circumcision who believed were astonished, and many were believed, and many came with Peter because the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles also, for they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. And then Peter answered, Can anybody forbid water? that they should be baptized who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have. And he commanded them that they be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then they ask him to stay a few days. I want to sum this whole chapter up real quick. I'm preaching today on fasting and prayer, but specifically I'm preaching on what are you hungry for? What are you hungry for? You will see in this story, it starts out in verse 2, giving a description of Cornelius. He was a devout man. The Bible uses the word devout. He was a devout man, a sincere, um, religious, committed. I, I, I looked up the word devout. It means to be, to be committed. He was serious about finding God, although he did not have the revelation of Jesus Christ. He was a Gentile, but he was seeking after. He watched the Jews. He saw how different they were, and he 
he, he was searching, but he didn't know their God. He didn't know that it was Jesus. He didn't know the story of, uh, of, and because Peter, when he came to his house later in this chapter, preached Jesus was hung on a tree and God raised him from the dead. That is his sermon. It's right there in that chapter. So he was devout. He was serious. And the Bible said two things about him, that he prayed always and he gave much alms to the people. He was generous to the people with money and he gave and he prayed always. And the angel of the Lord in verse three, the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said, I won't, I've come from the throne room of God and God said, that you have built, throw it up guys, throw that verse up. You have built a memorial. Go to what he says next, the next verse. You have built a memorial before me. You, uh, your prayers have come up before me. Your giving has come up before me. Your fasting, as I showed you, the word fasting isn't right there, but he did say, I've been fasting for four days. And the fasting brought a memorial before the throne of God about Cornelius' family because the Holy Spirit fell in his house on all the guests that he had invited in, and especially on his family. Do you understand that when you fast and you pray on a continual basis like you're doing, you are building something? You are building something in heaven? Prayer builds things. It builds marriages. It builds families. Maybe the enemy has torn your life to pieces. I'm going to tell you how you can build it back up. The Bible is very clear. You can build things through prayer and fasting. And he, he's building. He's building a memorial. I mean, I love that. That when we fast and we pray and we give in in honoring God, in seeking God, that is possible to build and put every over and over and over a brick on the memorial and it just keeps going up. A memorial that has your family and your address on it. Because God sent the revival not to a synagogue or a church. It came to his house and to his family. And I love what the angel said. The angel said, now God sent me to tell you, you you're, you've come up before him as a memorial because of your prayers. And he said, uh, I want you to know that God told me to tell you, Cornelius, to go to Joppa and there you will find a preacher, a preacher named Simon Peter. And then notice the details. This is all in the scriptures. He said, He'll be living by the sea with a tanner. Uh, uh, there's a tanner. And I, it's funny. I, first time I read that, I thought, hey, well, he's a suntan guy. He's just laying out in the... No, no, no. Not that kind of tanner. Uh, uh, he dealt in skins and animal skins. And, but they lived by the sea. And Simon Peter was staying in the house that that man owned by the sea. And he said, now here's... Don't miss this. He said, I want you to understand... That where God is about to take you, Cornelius, because you're fasting and praying, you've gotten God's attention, but you cannot get there by yourself. You need a preacher. That's what God told him. You need a preacher. You got a prayer life. You got a giving statement. You got de devotion. That's where the word devout comes from. You're devoted. You got a lot going on, but you need a preacher to take you where God really wants you to take. I'm so glad he didn't say, well, I, I, I'm having angel visitation. See, if the Lord sent some of you an angel, you wouldn't come to church. You'd start your own magazine and, and get your own TV show on Christian TV. But not this man. He was spiritual. He was given all the time. It got God's attention. He was praying all, the Bible said he would pray unto God always, continual praying, but he still needed a preacher. 
He still needed a man of God in his life. And this may sound a little self-serving, but I, I, I'm nothing. But I'm going to tell you, if I'm not your preacher, you better get you a preacher in your life who will tell you because, because preachers, if he's really anointed of God, he won't just tell you what you want to hear, but he'll make, you, he'll make you get on a fast every once in a while. He'll make you give up something every once in a while. He'll make you repent. He'll make you get on your knees and... The, the, 1 Corinthians 1.21, it pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. I'm a little bit perturbed with people who think they get so spiritual, so smart, so successful, so rich, so whatever, that they don't need a preacher. You do what you do, but I do what I do. And when I do what I do, you'll hear God in it. And you need a preacher in your life. Quit minimizing it and get yourself in church. You need need a preacher. By the foolishness of preaching, he saves those that believe. A preaching can save your marriage. It can save your family. It can save your business. It can save your career. It can save your purpose. It can save your destiny. And quit talking about all the preachers and quit criticizing all the preachers because one day you might need a man of God to lay his hands on you and curse that disease. And God, ah, oh, come on now. You know I'm preaching the truth. Jeremiah said, I'll give you shepherds after my heart and they will teach you knowledge and they will teach you truth. Turn to somebody and say, I know you. You really need a preacher. Don't ever get so spiritual. Don't ever get so mature. Don't ever get your own revelations. So much. I mean, he had an angel. And he said, I need a preacher. The truth. That'll tell the truth. And I, I like the fact that he was a God-picked preacher. I don't believe you just pick preachers like you pick a shirt at the mall. God told him his name and said, that's your preacher. See, you may not even like me sometimes, but if I'm your preacher, you can't leave. And if I'm not, you can't stay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to get in your, I'm going to mess you up and you're going to get offended and leave. But, but when you got a real preacher, you can't leave. Even if you don't agree with everything, you can't leave. You got to pray. I don't like that little beard on your face. Hey, you can't leave me. I don't know. We, we just, who do we think we are? We just, I don't like, it's like, a, I'll go over here, I'll go over there. No, you won't. Not if you really have, God has, and if I'm not it, please go find him or her. Please, I'm dead serious, because I don't have time. It, it, when you get in the right place, people can't offend you away. When you get in the right place, it doesn't matter if you shake their hand or not. If, when you get in the right place, all I want is when I walk in, come on, preacher, let it be like a fire shut up in your bones and preach to me until I weep. Preach to me until I'm broken. Preach to me until I get in the presence of God and he straightens out my thinking and fixes my attitude. Come on and clap your hands and praise God. And so, and so he sends three people after the preacher. Cornelius, the Bible said, took, um, he, had, he had two servants and he got, had a soldier. And he said, I want you to, he said, I want you to go to Joppa and I want you to ask around and go down in the neighborhood on the sea. And there's a tanner's house down there. And I want you to ask for a man named Simon Peter. This is all in your Bible, preaching it out of the Bible. And the Bible said that while they were on a one-day journey to the city where Simon Peter was, Simon Peter had been fasting. Whoop. 
and he walks out on his rooftop, and that's where the verse comes in, verse 9 or verse 10, I believe it's verse 10. He said, and he was very hungry. I'm hungry right now. <laughs> I really am. <laughs> but not much. Because the more I preach, the more I... See, that's the real question. You may be hungry, but what are you hungrier for? See, I'm hungrier for his presence than I am just a pastor of big church. I appreciate all y'all. I love you. I do. I, I love you. But I, when the revival hit here last year, I made up my mind. Time's too short. God, if you don't invade and we need a revival in this world and in this nation and I'm hungry, I'm hungrier now than I was when the revival came. Because once you ever go in where the glory is, you're never satisfied to stay in the outer court. Is anybody, you may be hungry for steak and hungry. See, notice his mind's on food and he, put, put that verse up, verse 10. He was very hungry, listen to that now, and wanted to eat. He's thinking of about pizza. He's thinking about Krispy Kreme. He's thinking about everything. I want to, I'm going to eat a steak, but something is about to happen right on. And, and while they were getting it ready, he had already put in his order. He had already plan. He wasn't praying much that day. He was writing down, I'm going to eat this first, and I'm going to eat this for lunch, and I'm going to eat this for dinner, and I'm going to top it off with a Sunday. Hallelujah. With a cherry on top and, and some hot fudge. But suddenly, glory to God, he fell in a trance, and he saw a table coming down out of heaven. Read your Bible. And on the table was a meal. And when he lit, he thought, ooh, this is a good drink. And he's so hungry, and he lifts up the little deal, and instead of seeing good kosher food that he could eat, he sees everything forbidden for him to eat and associate with in Leviticus chapter 11. And at that moment, a voice spoke and said, kill and eat. And he said, I can't, I can't associate with that Lord. That, 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 that is unclean. And I, I have never, he says those words, I have never, I would never get around that. And God sent another table. And he did it three times. And the same voice said, the voice, the, he, he heard a voice say, eat it. And then he came out of the trance. And he's pondering it. What does this mean? And suddenly at the door, knock, 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 knock. And the Jew, Simon Peter, walks down. It is illegal under the religious laws for him to have any association with a Gentile, not to mention let them in his house or him go to their house. To this day, a, a, an Orthodox Jew will not do that unless they have special permission. And he opens the door and three men are standing there saying, there's a very good man over there in the city and he wants you to come to his house. He said, God told him and sent an angel and told him, see, what I'm trying to show you is when you fast and pray, there's a praying Jew in one city. There's a praying Gentile. They're two different worlds. And I don't know, maybe you and your family are at two different worlds. Maybe, maybe you're not seeing eye to eye on anything. But when there's prayer and there's fasting going on, fasting and prayer fills in the middle space. Fasting and prayer builds bridges and makes connections, kingdom connections. God says, you may think I can't get you to that person. And you may think that person can't get to you. But when you you begin, I gotta turn, I gotta take it down a notch.
I heard the Lord say, get ready for kingdom connections. Get ready when you fast and pray. I need somebody to shout. I need somebody to believe. You can't make it happen, but God's going to connect you to the right people and the right places and the right Every businessman, every businesswoman, every person in this room, say, Lord, I expect kingdom connections. This chapter is about two things, connections and interruptions. Supernatural connections, supernatural interruptions. And the Bible said, I still got 10 minutes. And the Bible said, as Peter was fasting and praying, he's hungry. He's ready to quit. He's ready to eat. He's already in his mind said, uh, this ain't working. And I'm done with this. And that was sweet. That little last Sunday, I got caught up in the moment. But uh, it's time for me to eat. He's very hungry. But after he has the encounter and sees, see, Jesus, Jesus one time went to the well of Samaria and he was waiting on the woman to come. And his disciples, the Bible said, went to the city to get some food. And while he's there, he gets that woman saved and she goes and brings the whole city. They come back with a happy meal. And they said, We got you some lunch. And he said, listen to these words. I have meat you know not of. It's not that he wasn't hungry, but he was hungrier for the will of God. See, what are you hungrier for? Once Simon Peter touched into the spirit realm and was taken into the spirit, listen to me carefully. He never mentions hunger again. <laughs> He never mentions food again. His mind, is not, his mind is on the dream. See, when you fast and you pray, God will connect you to a fresh dream. When you fast and you pray, God, notice, notice what happened. Number one, when you fast and pray, you build a memorial before God. Number two, when you fast and you pray, you, you get the attention and you are pursued by dreams and visions and in the angelic host. Both of these people are fasting and praying and they're getting dreams. And if you want a fresh dream and you're at it and you want your next assignment, because Simon Peter did, he thought he knew what his next assignment was, but God said, I'm going to interrupt your life and I'm going to give you your next assignment. You're about to go preach to the first Gentile household that will ever hear the gospel. Up to that point, nobody was born again and filled with the Holy Ghost except Jews that were in the upper room and had been touched by that 120. But now here's a new assignment that has been birthed out of fasting and prayer. What if that man had been carnal and the other man had been carnal? We, the Gentile church, would not even be here had these two men not fasted and prayed and gave. And God, they, they say, come with us. They go with him. And when they walk into Cornelius' house, I want, to, I want to say to some of you who are very judgmental sometimes and you act like you're so holy that you can't associate with people on your level except unless they're on your level, which if you, you're good in some areas and you're mean in some other areas. And, and here's the deal. God, he, he got it. He said, oh, the vision was about that which I haven't been associating with. I'm supposed to associate with now because I fasted and prayed and, and, and I'm ready. And the God in me is stronger than the, the partial knowledge that they have. And... 
he walks into the house of Cornelius and the Bible said he had gathered the, all he could get in his house. And when he did, this is interesting. Oh, please listen to this part. The Bible said Cornelius was so, you know, he, he didn't understand. He didn't know. He didn't know. And he just had such a reverence for this preacher that God had given him his name. He fell down on his face and started worshiping him. And instantly, it's really good. Instantly, Peter reached down, grabbed him and picked him up and said, don't worship me. I'm not a superstar. I'm not anything. I'm just like you, maybe worse. Can I please say, don't worship a preacher. Just listen to him. No, he's got the same stuff that you got. He's got a family. Sometimes they're good. Sometimes it's crazy. Don't worship a man. I don't care how anointed they are, a singer. Don't care how anointed they are. Honor them. Praise God for them. And mostly pray for them because I promise you, Satan's got a target on them. They're going to go through hell. It's just, it's just how it goes. Picked him up and said, don't worship me. I appreciate it, but don't give God the glory. Give God all the glory. Lord, have mercy. Oh, I'm trying to move quick, but clap your hands and let's give God all the glory. Let's repent in any way, shape, or form if we, we don't follow men. Looking unto Jesus, looking unto Jesus, the author, the finisher of my faith. And the Bible said that he starts preaching. And oh, you should read the sermon. It's like, it's like four verses, but it's beautiful. And I, that's what I loved about it. He preached four verses of his sermon. I'm sure he had six or seven pages of a sermon, if, at least. Y'all know how we are. And he traveled a long ways. It's a whole day's journey. Had to spend the night. And he preached four verses. And the Bible said, and while he yet was speaking. And, and here's, the, here's, here's the thing we got to get back in the church. We're so programmed. We're so good. We're so bound to the drum click. We got the inner ear going so good. But I'm telling you, thank God that there was a preacher who wouldn't run on over the Holy Ghost when the Holy Ghost wanted to do something because he had a bunch more to preach. I, I'm telling you, some of the greatest services I've ever been in in my life was when I opened the Bible and I had the faith enough to start preaching and right in the middle of it, the Holy Ghost would fall and instead of pushing through that. I'm not talking about just because people were excited. I'm talking about I knew God is ready to do it now. We got to get, what I'm trying to say is fasting gives you sensitivity for God to do what he, when he shows up, you can't preach no better. Get out of the way. When he shows up, don't try to go to the next song until God's finished with that song. You can throw it all, use it next week. You already practiced. You already they got it prepared. And God's about to interrupt some business people. God's about to interrupt people's lives and routines. Because when you fast and you pray, God will send the Holy Ghost takeovers. And I just read this book sometimes and just going along, just going along, just going along. Whew. I've learned. Meditate on that. Pray about that. Think on that. Pull some stuff that you got on that. Listen to stuff about that. Because that's, that's how God leads us. My sheep know my voice. 
Y'all hear me? I think the most, and I'm done. I've got one minute and 15 seconds. So Bill, come to the keyboard. But here's what, here, here's, here's the difference between my sermon and Simon Peter's sermon. He didn't wait till he got to the end. He didn't call Bill up and everybody knew, well, it's time to go. And they start leaving. The Holy Spirit wants our full attention and our full heart. That when we, and this is why we had a revival last year that touched thousands and thousands of people. And I'm just, I'm just being very, very open right here and telling you the truth. When that thing broke out and it was totally unplanned, Every, every decision I had to make was running through my mind. Well, Monday night, we got this. And Tuesday night, we got that. And Wednesday night, you got this. And Thursday, you got that. And by the way, da, da, da. And then we got all the way over to the next week and Halloween. And <laughs> What if we would have said, well, you know, we got a Bible college and these kids are paying a tuition and, and we're kind of wrecking that and we're kind of wrecking this and wrecking that and we're, we're messing up the uh, um, school of discipleship with a thousand people in that and, you know, at all the campuses and, and man, man, we're really messing things up here. How about you? You looking at me like, well, I, we, I thought you would be led Lord better than that. No, I'm just like you. I think just like you. But when you fast and you pray, months after this fast, you won't see it coming, but the Holy Ghost will intercept and interfere and step in if you'll let him in situations and you were going to do one thing and you had planned to do it and you had it all prepared and the Lord will step right in and say, no, I got something greater. Because what touched me was it said, and all who heard the word. I, I bet he was reaching maybe 50% with his sermon. Let's be honest. Some of y'all thinking about what you got to do tomorrow. And some of you hear the baby crying. And there's always somebody, there's always somebody getting up. And then the next people, five rows all the way down, you know, five, or five people down. They have to stand up to let that person get out. And, and I'm not, it's, it's, I, I'm just telling you, it's a lot of movement. It's a lot of this. You look over and somebody's picking their nose or whatever. You, you, you just see all, it's just, distra- but, but let me promise you something. When it said, and when the Holy, while he yet was speaking, the Holy Ghost fell on the house. Notice the word, and all of them which heard it, it hit them. Even the people who didn't even know why they came. They just came because they were kidnapped by the relative and got paid off. But when he bombs a room, Every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess. I want him to bomb the room again. Hallelujah, I'm hungry for it. This morning I'm hungrier for that than I am for any meal. God said I can trust this move only to people who are willing to pray and miss meals. Because it humbles you. It cleans you. <laughs> it convicts you. It sanctifies you. I know the blood sanctifies us, but I'm saying you need, to, you need to work on this flesh. Your spirit's saved, but your flesh needs some work. See, you need a preacher. That's why I'm getting in your face. If you'd really go after God, you could lay those cigarettes down. If you'd really go after God, you'd never look at porn again. If you'd really go after God, you could get some accountability in your life. If you'd really go after God, you could get victory over the flesh and the devil. Come on, church, clap your hands and shout just a minute. At every campus, lift up your hands and say, God, everybody say, God. 
Jesus, I'm hungry for you. I'm hungry for your dream. I'm hungrier for your vision. I'm hungrier for your connections. I'm hungrier for your interruptions and leading. I want a sensitivity this year that he can interrupt my day. He can interrupt my, I'm telling you, and you, my wife would tell you this. She knows this is the truth. I can be walking sometimes or with her in the mall or wherever. And I try to stay. I, I'm, I, I never try to don't worship me. So when you hear me say something like this, just say, okay, yeah, that's a good point, but all glory to God. But I try to stay sensitive. I do. I know, I know now when the Lord stirs. But when we walk in stuff, sometimes the Lord will say something to her or to me. And I don't know what I'm trying to say, but the more you're open to it, the Bible said the heavens opened up when they were fasting and praying. The heaven, you'll walk under an open heaven. And you don't have to be in a religious anointed atmosphere for it. To, it can come. I've had it come upon me when I sit in powerful rooms that, that could affect the world. The spirit, the heaven would open and God would give me exactly what I was supposed to say. Amen. Throw your hands up. I, I got to go one more step. I want everybody who's, who's hungry for him. Get out of your seat and get down here as fast as you can. I don't care who you are. I don't, if, you, if, you, if you hear him speaking to you this morning and you want it to fall on your house, you have biblical proof in Acts chapter 10 that fasting and prayer like a magnet attracts God's power to your ad address and to your family. Whew. Every room, maybe we ought to anoint our house on this fast. Maybe we ought to anoint every room. Maybe we ought to anoint the lintel of the door with anointing oil. Woo. Hallelujah. He can interrupt you while you're driving down the road and you thought this is the kind of year you're going to have and God can give you one little thing to fine tune and he can turn your whole business around. If you'll throw your hands up, you will see that God has an open heaven over you right now. All over at every campus, begin to cry out to God. Lift your voice and pray. Pray. Let him connect you. Let him connect you. Let him connect you. Ask him for kingdom connections ask him for maybe you are that maybe you are that connection for somebody who's lost as they can be are you really sensitive enough to know that God can speak through you to them and the Holy Ghost back it up just say Lord here I am I'm available I'm yours I'm here I worship you right where you are wherever you're watching this online just right there in your house receive the power and the presence of the Lord. It's being ushered in with your worship. It's being ushered in as you begin to worship Him and praise Him. And just right where you are, say, Lord, I'm hungry. I'm hungry for you.